Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And I'd like to introduce you to my guests today. Uh, this is a group of Beverly High School students. Right, you're all seniors? Yes. yes. All seniors. And this group uh, is uh, currently involved in a project that we're going to be talking about. And in fact, why don't I do this right now? Uh, uh, they are involved in a project. We'll zoom in on this. BHS seniors making documentary about the former Briscoe School. And Kim, can you zoom in on the, on the photo a little bit more? There we go. And... Uh, so this was an article in the, in the uh, Salem News. And we're going to talk about this uh, documentary uh, project. So first of all, uh, let me uh, introduce uh, you guys. You can say your name and what, what uh, part uh, you have in the project. Uh, Stuart Moran, you are? I am the director okay. of the project. Director of the project. The next is William Sousa. I'm the assistant director. The assistant director. Matthew Lee. I'm the historian. Historian. And Arbor Rami. I am the chief editor. The chief editor of the project. So um, let, me, let me ask uh, you guys, what, what gave you the idea to do this? How did this come about? Um, well, I think that's something uh, the three of us can definitely talk about. Um, or the, the three... Um, Essentially, we were in the library, the BHS library, um, one day during one of our free periods, and we went back to, there's a little shelf in the back of the library with all these old yearbooks from past years of the high school, and that includes the yearbooks from back when the high school was in the Briscoe building. Right. Um, and we were just sort of looking through them, and then Will just sort of mentioned, like, oh, you know, I, was it, like, I, I'd love to do something like this? Yeah, like, I was thinking about what I had to do for my REACH project, and I was thinking, you know, an internship might not be the best thing to do. It might be more fun to do, like, a project. Maybe it might be cooler to do a project on Briscoe as it is its, you know, 100th anniversary. Right. And, and let me mention that, and I think our readers know that the, that the Briscoe School was built in 1923, and we are here 100 la years later in 2023. So you felt that doing a documentary on the 100th uh, anniversary of the, of the building of the school was appropriate. And I might mention, you might mention to our audience, you, you mentioned uh, that seniors have to do a senior project which can consist of either an internship or, or, a, or a project, right? Yes. So rather than doing an internship somewhere, uh, you decided to, to come together and, and do this project. Now, how, how did you get, uh, did you all like, come to this epiphany and have this light go on above your heads all at once? Or how did you kind of get this whole team together? I understand there are nine of you all together. Yes. So how did the group kind of coalesce? Um, it's kind of funny that you mentioned the sort of light bulb because... Um, <laughs> That, that's essentially what happened. I, I had thought about how much fun it would be to do something about Briscoe, um, but I just sort of thought, like, oh, over the summer, just sort of thought, ah, that would be too much work. I, I, I couldn't do that. And then when Will said, like, hey, that would be fun, I just sort of went, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and then Matt joined in as well since he was there at the time. So it started out as us three, then um, a few other people got involved just through us telling them about it. Um, Liv Garcia, our head of communications, uh, David Vazo, our videographer, and Daniel Pratt, our, one of our editors and okay. our production assistant. The three of them got involved through us kind of telling them about it, and then also um, yeah. Arbor. Okay. Um, and then... Two more people, um, Catherine Manzo, our production coordinator, and Hollis Colby, our um, music supervisor. They're in charge of the um, soundtrack. Okay. Um, the two of them had also sort of separately had the idea of doing something for Briscoe. So we kind of said, welcome aboard. <laughs> okay. Now, you, uh, you had to write up some, some sort of a project analysis or, and present this to, to, to Sean, to Mr. Fitzpatrick. Is that, uh, how did that work? Um, sort of. Yeah. We, or I guess not myself, but um, was it 
you who talked to him about? We tried to get it approved, basically, yes. as, yes. as, as uh. a project, which, which, of course, and Mr. Fitzpatrick, Sean Fitzpatrick, is the media teacher here, and I've worked with him in, in, in the past extensively. And I might add that the uh, two of you sitting here are actually media students either now or have taken media classes, and the other two. So what, who are the two media students? Uh, yeah, okay, Arbor and, and William and, and, and Matt and Stuart, you guys... Uh, uh, are going to earn your chops. You're going to yes. <laughs> you're, you're going to be thrown into the deep end of the pool, as it as it were. Right uh, now, what what um, have you decided yet as to what you uh, the expected length of the final thing will be, or is it just too early to to tell? So we're imagining it's probably going to be around an hour and a half. Okay. Um, just based on. I suppose what we have so far, our general idea, um, I'd imagine it would be around 90 or so minutes. Okay. And now, as I, as I, from what I can gather, the intent here, uh, uh, because the, the Briscoe Middle School right now is under construction, and it's being uh, changed, renovated into senior housing as far as artists, a par, uh, 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 studios, and they're going to redo the, uh, the auditorium. But your intent is not to feature the trans formation of that building into a different use, your, your, your intent is to, to kind of reminisce about what used to happen and get input from, from the community, right? Uh, yes. Yep. So, um, I, I'd say our goal is to provide a story about what it was typically like to attend Briscoe, yeah. either as a middle school or a junior high school or a high school. Um, while providing um, a few bits of information here and there about certain important events that happened mm -hmm. at the building um, through people who actually lived those experiences. So there isn't going to be a narrator telling people um, what happened from afar. It's going to be the experiences of, yeah. of those who actually... Yeah, lived through it. Well, let me let me just uh, quote here from from the article. Uh, People who wish to be interviewed or, or contribute to the documentary can actually contact you. And I think we have a we have a uh, email address. If I can ask our control room to put that up um, quickly. Yeah. So Briscoe Middle dot nineteen twenty three, which is when the when the building was built, at gmail dot com. And if they have any. Um, if they want to be interviewed by you. And actually, you are taking, uh, tell us about that. You're actually taking some audio. If people want to record uh, an audio clip and send you some information, they can do that as well, yes. right? Yes, or so, any um, photos or especially videos yeah. that they have of the building. We would love to also get that so we can put that into the actual project. Yeah. Now, how, how has that come out? Have you gotten a lot of input yet from the community and from people sending you stuff yet, or, or how's that going along? I'd say definitely, yeah. Yeah, we've done quite a few interviews from what I'm aware of, because yeah. I haven't been able to interview myself, unfortunately, but they've done a lot, and well, we've gotten a lot of, like, information, which yeah. I think is great for, like, the editing process, yeah. which I'm And Arbor, you're, you're the chief yeah. editor, so that ball so, like, that, is in your court, right? So. <laughs> that ball's yeah. in your court, so you're going to have to edit all that, all that stuff together. And when people are going to be sending stuff with, with all kind of different lighting and different, you know, cameras and, 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 yeah. and, and yeah. cell phones and, and things like, like that. Now, we have, um, uh, uh, you sent me uh, of some stuff where you guys, you guys got permission, obviously, yes. to go into the school yep. while they were doing some construction there and things like that, and you had to wear your hard hats or whatever. Uh, so, so I've got a couple of clips that I want to show our audience. So I ask our control room to uh, queue up the first uh, clip, and then what, after we watch that, you guys can comment on what uh, what we're seeing there. So Rob, if you could queue up that first clip. I think they're gonna install them somewhere else? I don't know, that'd be cool. Hopefully they just think it's a star. Oh, I love these stairs.
right. So uh, tell us that that was uh, you guys entering the school from the front doors, obviously, and then going into the in the main lobby and up the stairs. Tell us what was happening there, Stuart. So actually, we didn't enter through the front doors. Um, we entered through a side entrance, mm -hmm. um, typically. But we went around to the front office side. Um, this was when we visited back in February. And we discovered, well, Matt discovered. I point um, out that the plaques in the foyer are missing. Many okay. of the plaques which have been there since it opened. Okay. We're not sure where they've been taken to. We think it might be the new middle school. They do yeah. have some plaques over there, but we're not 100% sure. Uh-huh. The missing plaques. We're going to have to get to the bottom. Yes. Bottom. Yeah. <laughs> bottom. That's it's a mystery. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, there, there are sounds of construction in there um, yeah. as well. That was when we were um, in there. They were doing uh, quite a bit of renovations yeah. um, all over. Right now, and right now it's 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 uh, it's deeply in, in renovation mode right now, and they're working on the outside. Oh Because yeah. I think one of the one of the constraints of the of the bidding process that the city put out to the to whoever wanted to buy the building and and uh, was that the facade of the building stayed the way it was. They couldn't do anything that they could do, they remodel the inside and gut it and whatever. So now we have, we have another, um, another clip that, um, if I can ask Rob in the control room to show us another clip, and this is of, of uh, you guys, as I mentioned before, discovering some uh, old uh, teaching materials or maybe, maybe teachers, uh, teachers' guides, mm -hmm. stuff that the students, <laughs> yep. the, the answers to the questions, right? The answers <laughs> yes. to the tests. <laughs> Found them too late. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> too late. 20 years too right, late. So, hey, I, I want to see what's... Is this just all the curriculum? Uh, I, I think it is. Teacher's guide. Okay. Teacher class in here. Yeah. Dang. Are you yeah, and then there's other <laughs> stuff down here, too. There's, uh... Actually, it really just looks like more teaching literature stuff. Dang. Yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, because that would open up to the, the hallway. How was this room even set up? I, I forget. Right, yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I sat right near the door. I sat like right here ish. vaguely remember that. It was scary. <laughs> <laughs> it was scary for my life. I remember this was where the uh, student of the month party was. What? <laughs> Were you guys, did you guys never get student of the month? Oh, well, I... I got it the new middle school ones. I... I was like, okay. I got student of the month. Um, <laughs> it might have been April um, because I stayed after one day and then I was just like, hey, uh, teacher, do you want me to do you want me to clean some of the stuff off the floor of your room? Because I was bored, and apparently that did the trick. So uh, we have to mention the, the the two is tell us the names of the two young ladies there that were with you because you mentioned them before and unfortunately they couldn't be with us here in the studio. But tell us who the two young ladies. So were. Um, they were Catherine, our production coordinator, and then Hollis, our music supervisor. Yeah. Now, were you were you all Briscoe students? Did you all go to? Yes, yeah. um, yeah. All, all of our team except um, Liv, our head of communications. Okay. We all went to Briscoe for two years, and then we were a part of the first graduating class of right. uh, Beverly Middle yeah. School. So tell me, what what was it like? What was your feeling going back into these class? And you, we got a little bit of feel of it for in that clip. But what was what was your feeling going back and? And, and seeing all the dust and everything and seeing, well, this is where my desk was. How, how, what, what did you feel? Uh, how, how was that? What kind of feeling did you have? 
Uh, well, I didn't get to see, like, the classrooms because I wasn't with them when they went through, like, the classrooms that it just showed, but I was with them when they went through the basement. Yeah. Which, man, like, those were the classes where we'd have, like, engineering, gym, wellness, computer science, I think that's what it was called. I don't I remember mm -hmm. nowadays, but I don't know. It was just a bunch of memories. I just, like, kept thinking about the things that we used to do in said classes. Like, we went into one classroom, and I started talking with Will about some fond things that we did in a computer class because we were together in it so just walking through the classrooms and old areas all it did was just bring back memories it was also like you know a little bit creepy because that place is a basement and it was really dark and abandoned. <laughs> but uh don't tell me you were scared i wasn't scared but like i just look in the room and it'd be pitch blackness i'd be like <laughs> it was always like that though we even referred to it as a dungeon when we used to go to bristol yeah, the, seriously uh, yeah. well the um the old fallout shelter that they have there, I assume that's what you're yeah, referring to? Oh, yes. Oh, fallout shelter. Yes. Um, yeah. it, it was a little, I, I think honestly one of the most, one of the strangest things was going back and seeing the fallout shelter. Um, because we had seen it once back in sixth grade. We, yeah. like they took us all down there and opened up the door and you could just kind of look into this pitch black room filled with boxes and like gravel. And it was like, ominous right and there were rumors that there were rats in there but then we went back um and saw and they had like temporary lights up and it was just so strange it, it felt so much smaller and it was just it, it kind of lost that air of Mystery, mystery foreboding. Oh, okay, yeah, the, the, the curtain had been pulled aside, right? The great yeah. Oz is no longer <laughs> a mystery man yeah, behind yeah. The, the curtain. Well, Matthew, let me let me ask you a question. Now, you're you're the historian, right, mm -hmm. on this project. So, as the historian, have you have you gone and tried to find like uh, where have you gone to get information? What kind of things have you been doing as historian? Well, I've been looking up some information online, which is how we were able to find the builders' plans for the oh. um, what Harbor Light is doing. Yeah. Um, and in there, there was like a lot of information. Something that was really interesting was they um, had to obviously see how the building was because they were going to have people inside of it again. They needed to see how it was like when it closed. And um, many of the systems saw little to no changes from 1923 onward. Like there, the boiler room especially, there was four boilers down there. Um, two were from 1923 and two were from 1956. And usually there'd be three operating at one given time. And so basically when we were there, 60 years later, we were there 60 years later past when like the newest boiler was being used. <laughs> so it was definitely, there was definitely that. And um, we also recently went to um, the Council on Aging yep. because we talked to them. They'd had certain interviews which they can share with us. And also um, they did, um, forget what it was called, something where they talked to older people about their experiences, like, um, I think it was Historic Beverly, I'm not sure. Um, but there was a lot of photos in there, like, that they would give to people so they could write up something about it and uh, what they remember. And so that was definitely something we're going to use, too. Yeah. Now, did you uh, did you get a chance to go into the uh, old auditorium? And then now, you, you when you were there in school, they had, what, school plays and, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. yeah. ceremonies and graduation, different things. Different things like that. Now, how, what's, this, what's the condition of that right now? Is that being completely gutted? What, what did you see when you went in there? It's surprisingly in the best condition, yeah. I think, yes. out of everything. Um, yeah. Because they, they are preserving the auditorium specifically. Yeah. Um, I know they're giving it to some sort of theater company. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I have the um, proper knowledge to say for certain, but it's something along the lines of that. So we... We went in, and there honestly wasn't that much change. The seats were still in the same condition, still had the same amount of them missing. Yeah, um, <laughs> they're <old> already. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. it, it. one of the things that shocked me the most, I think shocked us the most, was that on stage, they still have the backdrop set up from the last show they yeah. ever did, from Tribute to Briscoe. They still yeah. Yeah. have the backdrop set up there. Yeah. That, that's interesting. That's interesting. When I, when we when Bevcam moved from the old high school when this was being built, we moved into the Memorial School, which has since before it was torn down, uh, and uh, we we set up our studio in the old auditorium. And in the back, they had all of these sets 
back there that went back decades, <laughs> you know, <laughs> painted sets and things like that. And uh, we, we actually found seven pianos back there. In, in, well, I, I think there, maybe one of them could be used, but, but that was kind of interesting. Uh, and now, what, um, aside from being your, your senior project, what, um, what are your expectations uh, uh, for, for this documentary? Do you see anything uh, you know, for, for use or, or uh, showing this beyond just having a senior project? What, what do you think about that? Um, so, yes, now is as good a time as any to announce it. We are working currently with the Cabot Cinema okay. to show the finished product. Okay. Um, the tentative date currently is May 22nd okay. at 7. Um, so, again, we're working with getting that set in stone, but I would say right now May 22nd is the... Uh, most likely date so, that we've So right discussed. now you've got a little bit less than two months, right? Are you working with Casey, Casey Soward over there? He's the director? No? No, I don't think so. uh, no not at the moment, no. Okay. So you've got a definite definite date to, to show it. Now, will, th will this be a, a gratis performance, a gratis showing, or are you going to gonna have a, uh, you're going to sell tickets, or have you decided on that yet? You don't know that. Um, Currently, the plan is to show it for free. We um, we don't want to try and make money off of this. We would just like to show it to the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is fantastic. So I think we have one more uh, clip that uh, we want to show, and you guys can tell us what uh, tell our audience what we're looking at here uh, after we're done. So, if, Rob, if you can put that up for us, uh, please. Old worksheets. Oh. That looks not familiar. Is this Mr. Sullivan's? Maybe, because didn't he didn't he have to Oh there's the old um Oh my goodness. But this is all science stuff. I don't know. This must have been Oh I feel like I I definitely did this. I remember this hundred percent. He used to get brain pops. Did he? Wait, hang on, hang I on. Why are some of them... Battle Royale. What? Wait, what? <laughs> hang on. Battle Royale. Someone's phone number's on the wall too. Oh, should we call it? Yeah. Call for Fortnite. Call for fun. Oh my gosh. We're gonna go back to 2017. We're gonna start acting like it. No. <laughs> I play Pokemon Go. Shush. <laughs> Holy cow. This is cool. Yeah, this Just was... This <laughs> <laughs> that was his writing. I remember his writing. That's what you saw him. Yeah. I mean, you're right. <laughs> Holy cow. Discovering the Arty. Huh. Dang. Oh. Bam. This is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do not use again dated info. Dang. <laughs> Good to know. Teaching us the wrong yeah. stuff. Which one of the following does not help archaeologists learn about early human written records? <laughs> I just know they got those written, written records back in, you know, 10,000 BC. 10,000 BC. Heck yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So that looks like the, the notes from an anthropology course. Yeah. Any of you guys take anthropology when you're. So, um. That was actually from our social studies class. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, I know Matt and I, and were you on Six Gold? Um, or, I, no, I don't think so. Uh, no, well, so. Um, Matt and I, and then also um, Catherine and Hollis, um, we were all a part of Gold Team in sixth grade. So we all had the same teacher and we're all in the same classroom, that classroom that we were just in, looking at um, those classroom materials that we had done yeah. Um, yeah. all those years ago. And that was actually the only um, remnant remnants of that sort of thing that we came across. All the other um, cabinets had basically been cleared out, but yeah. we found all of those materials and it had everything still in it, all the quizzes, all the wow. 
readings that we did at everything so so Matt let me ask you did you did you keep these things now did you did you take those out and do you have you got them sequestered away somewhere or well I believe we kept one of them the, in the other clip we also find the um, English one that's the only other one we could find uh -huh. but I, I know we kept the English one and I think actually did we keep um, so one? we said we were going to, oh, and, and then we unfortunately we um, forgot to grab all of the materials <laughs> on our way out. Um, so um, we ran out of time. And now, so you're you're expecting to have this done now in a couple a couple of months. And you, you feel pretty pretty uh, pretty good about the the uh, uh, getting your product done on time? Because I mean, guess if you got a show date at the at the Cabot. Yeah, right. You got the show must go on, so you've got to have it done. Now, have you got have you got a title for this? Any kind of catchy title, or just kind of documentary about the Briscoe School, nineteen twenty? <laughs> um, we are working on a title. We believe we have one figured out. Um, we are going to be announcing it on our social media, on our Instagram and Facebook pages, both titled Briscoe Documentary. Okay. We will be announcing them this Friday. April 7th. Okay, okay. Now, I do want to show, uh, I'd like to ask Rob to put up that uh, email address again. So, uh, if people have any kind of um, um, audio clips or pictures or anything else, they can send that to briscomiddle.1923 at gmail.com. And according to, uh, to, to you, Stuart, I'm quoting from the paper, so you can't deny this. <laughs> we are hoping to use the voices of people to sort of craft the story of what it was like to attend or work there and how the building affected people who went to it. And uh, so uh, I will, before we, before we leave, we just have a minute or so, I want to give uh, our audience, I want to give you guys a, a chance to say your name and what your, what your uh, uh, position on the project, uh, project is. And, and uh, so I've been speaking to a group of Beverly High School seniors who, as their senior project, are doing a, a documentary about the 100th anniversary of the, uh, of the Briscoe School. So I'll let you guys introduce yourselves once again. I'm Stuart Morin, and I am the director of the project. I'm William Sousa, and I am the assistant director. I'm Matthew Lee, and I'm the historian of the project. Um, Arbor Rami, and I'm the chief editor of this historic project. Well, gentlemen, and uh, and uh, say hi and uh, to to the rest of the crew that we didn't have weren't able to accommodate here, but thank you very much for being my guest. Very uh, interesting story. I'm I'm looking forward. I'll be I'll be in the audience at the Cabot to to see the grand premiere, world premiere of this. All right. Thank you very much for for being my guest. Thank you. And, thank, uh, you. thank you. I'd like to remind uh, our viewers that you have been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>